I was studying in Islamabad at an institution and I happened to be, have finished the seventh year and I was going into the eighth or final year. And the eighth or final year, that's the year every, many of you are aware of, it's called Dora Hadith. It's a very, very famous year. It's a very, very important year. It's sort of the essential year. Yani, what they say is that the seven years was preparation for the eighth year. And that's really the end point of the studies in the Dars Nizami, which is basically that you get to this final level in which you prepare and you study for hadith. It's like being in the company of the Prophet ﷺ for a year, essentially. It's as close as you can come. Because all of the various hadith are recited and they're studied, and you're just constantly in the remembrance of the time of the Prophet ﷺ. So when this eighth year comes, people are very much desirous to do the eighth year in the company of the most pious and famous people that you can find. So when, when I was studying in my seventh year, there were nine, eight, nine students, just a handful. It was a tiny room. We would be sitting in there, and the students would just be around in this corner, you know, sitting around us. And then, this, at the end of the seventh year, or towards the end of the seventh year, the students, they began to discuss. And they started saying, so where are you going? And where are you going? And where are you going? And everybody had a different place. One person said, oh, I'm going to... Darulum Karachi, and I'm going to sit in the gatherings of Mufti Taqi Uthmani, and I'm going to this place, and I'm going to sit here, and one person said, I'm going to Dioband, and I'm going to sit here. So everybody had a different place where they were going to go, and a handful of people were going to stay, and they came to me, and they said, um, so where are you going? So I said, I'm not going anywhere, because I came from very, very far, and I really had nothing, and Allah created this opportunity for me and this is my teacher and I'm going to be with this teacher until the very end. Now, the students, they thought I was crazy and the reason they thought I was crazy was because that year, the, the Shaykh al-Hadith is the name of the highest teacher, the highest level teacher who actually is responsible for teaching Bukhari. So the Shaykh al-Hadith, he had retired that year and they hadn't yet found a Shaykh al-Hadith for the, for the next year. So I said, it doesn't matter. I came here, I benefited from here, my sheikh sent me here, I'm staying here. And then what happened was, after he retired, they appointed another person to be sheikh al-Hadith, and this teacher was an inc amazing, incredible teacher, who prepared and was so honored to be in that position, that he came every day to class, he came on time, he came fully prepared, and he was super excited. So, to, you know, the teachers, one aspect of a teacher is the experience of a teacher. Another aspect of the teacher is how much a teacher desires to be there and feels honored to be there and wants to teach. And this person who taught me, Shaykh al-Hadith, there were six people in the class, five, six, handful of people in the class. He would be lecturing as if 3,000 people were in the room. He would lecture, he would sit there, he would be screaming on top of his lungs and so excited and doing this and doing that. And seven people are sitting in front of him, sometimes four people, depending on who's sick that day. He's talking through the wall. He's talking through the wall because he was so honored to, t to teach that year. And I will tell you that I benefited from that teacher in a way that I have not benefited from any teacher in my whole life. Because, I mean, I have had many teachers. You know, I mean, I, I'm a professor myself. I teach many, many people. And I have not benefited from any teacher the way I benefited from that teacher to the extent that the way I teach is very much a replica of the way he teaches. And the funny thing is that now I teach much more dunyawi knowledge than I do dini knowledge. I'm a professor and I'm in a medical school and it's one of the top medical schools in the country and I teach pathology, which is a subject in medical school, which is like the essential subject in the second year of medical school. And I teach students. I teach students all over the world. And I use, that, I use many, many, many of the things that I observed in this teacher to teach my own medical students. Now, obviously I'm not teaching them deen, but I'm teaching them some aspects of how they can benefit humanity. But that same energy, that same dedication, that same speaking through the wall, you know, talking beyond who's there. I have that same, I apply those exact same principles in the way that I teach. And essentially it defined me. It defined me because of that interaction. And so that few months of sitting there has affected tens of thousands of medical student, students all over the world. Every year, I will tell you, I can tell you at least 10 to 15, because I wrote a medical textbook and I also have lectures that go with that textbook, at least 15,000 medical students every year learn from me. And what, who are they really learning from? They're not learning from me. They're learning from that teacher who was teaching six people because I learned from him. 
So, and people come to me all the time. They say, where did you learn to teach like that? How, how come you teach like that? Nobody teaches like that. So where did, well, how come you're teaching like that? I said, I didn't learn to teach like that here. I learned to teach like that at the base of the Himalayas, you know, in a room in a, with six people, and which was, the whole building probably cost $20,000, let alone the, you know, the, two, the, the $50 million building that I teach in right now. So the, this is the mechanism by which you take advantage of opportunity. بني دبا صفحة جديدة وصل الماضي شد طريق وصل الماضي وصل الماضي بني دبا